got a hand free. Well, we thank you, Lord. We pray. We thank you, glorify you. Lord, we know you're not yet saved, sanctified, and set up for the last year. Thank you, Lord, for where your brother's from. Thank you, where you promised to take us to. So we'll say yes to your pretty good. Amen, amen. All right. Listen, we have another Wednesday night, a very important Bible class. But I think I want to hear a selection from uh, God is Still on the Throne by the Bells. important Bible class tonight and I want to first uh, let everyone understand that the discipline code God gives to his church is for the reason of transforming an individual from the carnality of the flesh to make you spiritual beings now, even though we're in a human body, naturally, we're not controlled by the devices of the human nature. Amen. We are now controlled by the Spirit of God that lives within us. And this is why 
uh, it is proven within itself if you are saved. I believe the Bible says, let a man examine himself, whether he be in the faith. All you have to do is allow for your light to shine. Let your spiritual self take advantage of the word of God and put it into action in your life. Somebody's watching you. Amen. Somebody is taking notice of how you conduct yourself and how you carry yourself. And this is why it's so important. Nobody that is chosen by God lowers the standard. Amen. Amen. And for people to go to a church that tells you can nobody live holy, can nobody live right, then that would put the word of God and make it of non-effect. Because God said, be ye holy as I am holy. So when he puts the spirit of truth and righteousness in you, it is for you to follow that truth that you can live a righteous life. And it's not difficult as someone would try to make it to be. Now, you can't do anything without the spirit of God indwelling. This is very important. And once we have the spirit of God indwelling, then as the scripture testifies, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Yeah. Not of ourselves, but it's the Spirit of God that strengthens us to allow us to pick up our cross and follow after Him. Now I want to open up in, I think, Romans chapter 16. Uh, read verse 25 and 26. Now again, now, the, word, the Word of God is to change us. Yeah. Yeah. We're not to change the word of God. The word of God is to change us. Amen. Read. Now to him that is power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Yes. But now it's made manifest. Now it's made known. And by the scriptures of the prophets. By the Bible. According to the commandment of the everlasting God. Given by God. Made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Made known to everybody. Amen. All nations mean everybody. For what? For the obedience of faith. For the obedience of faith. You always are going to be put to a test to find out if you are really loyal to your commitment to God. Yes. It's Christ within us that does the work. And if we allow the Spirit of God to have its perfect way in our lives, nobody's going to backslide. Amen. Now we see this hypocrite church that we are surrounded by. Amen. Everywhere you look, on Sunday you see the parking lot full. Yeah. But the people are not living anything for God. Amen. The commitment has to come by an instruction to a rule that God has given a people to let that people know or to identify with that people as to be followers of Christ. Amen. The rules are very plain in the Bible. It's to create a separation, a division. And that division is so important because this is what separates righteousness from unrighteousness. And this is why the code of discipline is so very important that you learn how to deny yourself as I shared last week, pick up your cross or your responsibility in serving God. We today are faced with a monumental task, and that is to be the guiding light for the rest of the world. We must understand that there is a righteous church, Amen. and we're going to be attacked as never before because we are holding up a standard that is not popular. But if we call, I think I also mentioned this on many occasions, Jesus was not crucified for being popular. All right, man. Jesus was crucified for being unpopular. Yeah. But what did he do? Like the Roman governor said, what sin has he committed? That's right. I can't find no fault with him. But they said crucify him anyhow. They can't find fault with true light, but they're pointing out, oh, but the, the sisters were a head cover. We don't like that. You don't like it, but God loves it. All right. The head cover is an instruction God gives for the sisterhood to separate them from the world 
where the sisters can wear anything and everything. Yes. Amen. But God wants a modest appearance, a humble attitude. When you're modest and when you're humble in your countenance, it does not show any flash. Right. You don't need no max factor to make you pretty. Right. And you certainly don't need no lipstick. Yeah. Lipstick is a paint. And paint, it, it, whether you paint the house or whether you paint your face, it's still paint. All right. You're changing something. You're changing your whole demeanor. And when you paint your face, you are trying to look different than what God has intended for you to look. All right. That's pride and that's vanity. Yes. Yeah. And both are rejected by God. Amen. Now I want you to take notice in, uh, I want you to go down to Acts chapter 10. Read verse 3 through 6. Now this, this deals with a man who really wanted to be saved. And it goes through what he went through yeah. to try to reach the very throne room of God. Somebody had told him about this great Jesus. Oh. Somebody had told him about the Holy Scriptures. Though he didn't know too much about them, he knew something in order to pray, yeah. in order to send his tithing. Amen. All right, read. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. Cornelius, he called him by his name. Now, let me stop right there. Mm. Notice, he didn't say sir or you. He called him by his name. Yeah. Do you know everybody here? God called you by your name, and that's why you're here. God called you directly by your name to be in a holiness church. Though you may not say, what well, I don't recall hearing his voice. I know you heard it because that's why you're here. All right, Lord. You're not here by no invitation except that invitation that comes from God by calling you by your name. Now, read, daughter. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial. Notice what it says now. Thy prayers and thy arms have come up as a memorial to God. Uh -huh. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Now, when God touched the heart of Cornelius, he told him to go to Joppa, where he had an apostle there, and the apostle would tell him what to do. Now, God didn't tell him what to do. Yeah. It's the preacher who tells the seeker of truth what to do. Yeah. You come to church. God don't speak to you directly. He speaks to you through the preacher that he has sent to teach you and to tell you what you must do. Amen. So you never rebel against the word of God from the preacher Amen. because you can't fight with God. And if you fight with the preacher... You're fighting with God. Amen. Now again, this, deals, this is a very important subject text. Because here's a man who wanted salvation, but he didn't quite know how to get saved. So he had to go to the apostle of God and get further instructions on what to do to be saved. Right. Now I also want you to pick up in Acts, the 10th chapter, or 8th chapter of Acts, and connect this with verse 6. 47 to 28. And he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopia. Now here's another man that wanted to be saved. Read. Who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go now, there. Now this eunuch was reading the Bible, but again, he had no idea what he was reading. Amen. So again, God had to send a preacher to rightly divide the word to him. Now I'm saying this in context. It's good for you to have a Bible, but read what we tell you to read. All right. Amen. Unless you just want to read the Psalms, which is beautiful. But the Psalms are not going to tell you how to live. All right. It's the doctrine that tells you how to live. Yeah. Take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine. If you're doing this, you save yourself and them that will hear you. Yeah. Now, what it means, them that will hear you, someone is going to emulate your life. Give me 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. Someone is going to always emulate your life. That's why I said, always be careful when you go in public. Amen. Oh, yeah. And when you go on your job, always be careful. Amen. Somebody is noticing you, even though you don't think they're noticing you. They are watching you. Watch your behavior. Watch your demeanor. 
And when someone comes to you maybe with the wrong spirit or wrong attitude, walk away from them. Don't Amen. say don't say words that create a controversy. Just just ease on the way. And you have to take notice of your type of character that you have. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, when you come into the church, it's so very important that you reflect the church and that you understand by you being in the church, you want to be attacked. America is facing a calamity right today because nobody wants to follow the church rules. Yes. People want to go to church on Sunday, Mother's Day and Easter, but they don't want to follow the rules of the church. Yes. Now the true church of God has set an example for the rest of the church has. And when God comes back, he's only coming back for one church. Yes. Now there could be many branches, but there's only one church. Yes. And that we have to speak the same thing yes. so that we be uh, in the identification of the one church. Amen. There's no two or three different rules for two or three different churches. Amen. So let's understand clearly. Now, why is it that you can go to a church? Women don't have no head cover. Got all kind of fancy hats on. Yes. All kind of two-toned hair. Yes. Blind when there ain't no blind. Redhead when there ain't no redhead. All of these things are in the false church. This creates an imbalance within the righteousness of God because we are to be of one accord. Yes. Now, take notice. We're talking about the veil covering. I want you to read verse 5 and 6 and then back up to verse 1 again. But every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered. Now, this means every woman who comes to church with her head uncovered. Now, I shared in times past, the word covered in the King James Version Bible literally translate in the Greek as veiled. Yeah. Also translates into the Greek, uh, or rather into the Hebrew, as veiled. So you've got the Greek translation, Hebrew translation, all means veiled. Yeah. That's why we wear a veil. Now, th there's nothing wrong with a woman that wears a hat, as long as that hat is in sobriety. But I would like to emphasize, the Bible didn't say hat. It's in vain. Amen. Why is this so important? It's important because it's an instruction from God. Amen. Back up now, you can back up to connect me with verse 1. Amen. Yes. Be ye followers of me. Be followers of me. Even as I also am of Christ. Now, Paul uses his authority as being the apostle. He said, I want you to follow me because I'm following the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Read. Now I praise you, brethren. That you remember me in all things and keep remember the Remember my instructions in all things. Now he's teaching here, he's teaching the bell covering, but he wants you to remember him in all of his teachings. Not just the bell covering, but in all of his teachings. Read. And keep the ordinances as I deliver keep them. Keep the you. rule that I give you. Yes. Now, if you read Holloman's Bible Dictionary of Religion, I'm saying this to the YouTube viewers, go to the library. Look up Holloman's Bible Dictionary under the word covering the head. I believe that's the title, yes. covering the head. It's not under bail, it's under covering the head. Yes, right. And it states clearly, Paul gave a teaching in 1 Corinthians because the Hebrew people thought, or the saved people under the dispensation of grace, taught that they didn't have to wear a veil covering because of grace. Because we are saved by grace does not have anything to do with an ordinance that an apostle gives you. Amen. So the veil covering is an instruction from an apostle. Now in Holland's Bible Dictionary, it states, women who go in a public gathering yeah. without a veil is a sign of immodesty and lack of virtue. Yeah. Women who come to a worship service or a church service without a veil is unthinkable. Yes. Yes. In other words, I said before, you can't let that cross your small mind. Amen. You got to wear a bill covered. That's the instruction of God. Now, many times in the false church, you say, well, that's really not necessary. But who's to say an instruction from God is not necessary? Amen. This is why you have all these denominations. Yes. This preacher said, well, that's not necessary. And another text comes up in another Baptists say that's not necessary. Seventh-day Adventists say that's not necessary. Joe Wooden say that's not necessary. What do you got? You got all these denominations when God said that everybody speak the same thing. Yeah. So why are we not speaking the same thing? 
because everybody does not want to line up with the word of God. Yeah. But we're here to rebuke the demon and them yes. devils yes. who call themselves saved and are not. And I've said before, 98% of the people who follow and claim to be Christians are not no more Christian than the devil is. Yeah. You are a Christian if you follow Christ. Yes. If you keep his instructions. Get me, uh, I think on Galatians 5. Read verse 16 through 21. Watch those. Amen. Amen. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, yes. and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit means if you live by the spiritual instructions, you won't fulfill the desires and the lust of the flesh. Remember Paul taught that the flesh is always at war with the Spirit? Yes. Yes. But like I said before, when you get saved, the spirit man controls you now, not the flesh. So when the flesh says, I want a cigarette, spirit says no. Amen. When the flesh says, I want to drink a liquor, spirit says no. Amen. I want a little bit of drugs, the spirit say no. Amen. So you are dominated now by the spirit because you are saved, and the spirit of God dwells in you. Amen. And if any man has not the spirit of Christ, it's none of his. So if the Holy Ghost is not in you, yes. then you don't belong to Christ. Amen. Read. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the, the flesh war or lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Yes. And these are contrary the one to the other. Yes. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Uh huh. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. If you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law of condemnation. Now read. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Watch close. The works of the flesh are manifest or made known. Watch close. Which are these? These. Adultery, fornication, adultery. uncleanness, lasciviousness. Wait a minute. Adultery, fornication. That's sleeping with somebody who's not your wife or not your husband. And also, if you're sleeping with another man, amen, you got to quit that too. Or if you're a woman sleeping with another woman, you got to quit that too. Amen. Read. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hate. Idolatry, you say. Yes. You got to get rid of that Christmas tree. Amen. You got to get rid of Santa Claus too. You got to get rid of that e Easter bunny, that Easter egg. Amen. Do you know if you were to stop and examine Easter egg yes. and Easter bunny and connect it with Easter, yes. they will show you right then that that's a pagan festival. Amen. It can't be of God. Because there's nowhere in, in, in the Bible where God tell you get an egg on this specific day and exchange it. Amen. Decorate it, paint it, and give it to the children so they can have an uh, 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 Easter egg roll, an Easter egg hunt. Yeah. And don't forget the basket with the bunny in it. Right. Easter and the bunny represents a pagan festival. It automatically allows you to identify this is not of the Bible. Why? Because it's not in the Bible. Amen. Right. Amen. So it's self-evident. So when we speak out against Christmas and Easter, we're talking about what the Bible says. Yes. And you can't find Bible, you can't find Christmas or Easter nowhere in the Holy Bible. Right. And that, that one place about Easter again is placed in by the Church of England uh, in the second printing yeah. of the King James Bible yeah, next right. to Passover, yeah. which in the original text yeah, you ain't gonna find Easter or Christmas right. or the bunny rabbit, yeah, right. amen, or Easter egg hunt, right. or nothing like that. Now notice, I said before, around Christmas time you find the fruit cake. Uh -huh. But the fruit cake, fruit cake was in existence 2,000 years before Moses. Uh -huh. They made a cake out of fruit. Yeah. Didn't have no granulated sugar then. Nope. They had honey and molasses and, and they had dried nuts and dried fruit. And they put it into this cake. Examine the fruit cake. What is uh -huh. it? Dried nuts uh -huh. and dried fruit. Yeah, cool. And made with honey and molasses. And they sell it when? Around Christmas time. Yeah. That's why they call it the fruit cake. Yeah. Around Christmas time. You can't buy it this week. No. Right. Go to, go to, go to uh, Walmart and say, I want a fruit cake. And they'll tell you, a fruit cake? Oh, you can't get that to Christmas. <laughs> That's seasonal. The same cake that they exchanged way back over 2,000 years before the prophet Moses. Yeah. Yeah. So we're trying to bring you into an awareness. Somebody's lying on the church of God. Yeah. And we ought to point out that error and them demon spirits that tell you it's all right to have Christmas and it's all right to have Easter 
and it's all for the children. No, a lie. And, and children go to hell too after they reach a certain age of accountability. So you raise up a child the way they should go. Yeah. This is why we have our little children give, we call it a piece of gold. They take their little dollar and put it in the envelope and give it to the church. Yeah. Because we are teaching our children. You put God first and that candy bar second. Yeah. That bottle of soda second. Yeah. That a bag of chips second. Yeah. Yeah. Give to the kingdom of God. Learn this. Why? We are teaching our children. And this is why you got all this lesbian behavior uh -huh. and sodomy yeah. in children because somebody ain't teaching children what thus saith the Lord. Amen. So we're going to teach our children what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. And we're not going to let no school teacher teach our children a little boy to be a little girl if he wants to be. Amen. What kind of nonsense is this? Do you know 25 years ago they had to put a person in jail for that? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. You don't teach no child something like that. Yes. But it's acceptable now because you got a corrupt government in Washington, D.C. And I'm trying my best to pray him out and you need to try to pray him out too. Because yes. it's taking America into the wrong, America into the wrong direction. When you teach and because pastors are very passive, they, they allow for anything. You can't allow for anything if you're going to stand for something. Yes. If we stand for holiness, we going to speak out against this wickedness that's going on, especially with our children. Mess with me. Mess with the devil. Don't fool the children. Amen. Loose here. We're going to come against you with a blood-stained banner. You ain't going to tell my little boy he's a little girl. You ain't going to tell my little girl she's a little boy. Oh, loose here. We, we're getting ready to, 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 to waltz. All right. All right. Hallelujah. I'm talking waltz with some baseball bats and things. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not going to back down from the righteousness of God. Amen. We're going to stand up and defend the faith no matter what comes against us. And they can only bring so much against us because we represent the church of God. Yes. And God said he had to have a church. Right. He will have a church. He's going to have a people Amen. that will defend his word. Yes. And we are that people. Yes. So stand strong. Yes. Amen. Don't, don't leave here no coward. Amen. Leave here with, your, with, with some backbone. And if they criticize you, make fun of you because you got a bill coming on your job, hey, hold your head up a little bit higher. All right. All right. What's that on your head? Oh, it's the bill. Yeah. Oh, why would you wear a bill? Because it's in the Bible. Right. Then see what they're going to say. Amen. Well, when I go to the Baptist church, we don't wear no bill. That's because you go to the Baptist church. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. You found the wrong way. I'm found the right way. Amen. God said a woman ought to wear a bail. Amen. And that's what we do. Women ought to wear a dress and men wear pants. Yeah. Let me do it around me again, 2025. Right. God condemned cross dressing way back in the Old Testament. Yeah. Now, whether you call it a robe or whatever, whatever it was, a woman's robe was different than a man's robe. Yeah. Watch close. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. A woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man wear a dress. Put on a woman's garment. Today it's a dress, isn't it? That's right. Amen. Until the Second World War, all women wore dresses or skirts, and men wore pants. We never seen no man with no dress on. Amen. If you married, then you do wear pants in the Baptist church. But if your husband come home with a dress on, what are you gonna do? You are gonna say, "Oh Lord, woman, what's going on? Amen. What's going on with you?" There's something wrong with you. You're going to disobey the word of God. And you're going to wear a pants. And you know you wasn't raised up to wear pants. You yeah. was raised up to wear a skirt. Amen. But it's not popular today. And it's not popular. And I've said this before. I want you to understand. Woman gets pregnant nowadays. She's rejected by this new age movement. Yes. Oh, you mean to tell me you done got pregnant? Don't you know, You don't know where, uh, what's that clinic? Planned Parenthood, you don't know how to get there, I'll take you. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want to go to Planned Parenthood. I'm pregnant. I'm How glad about it. Amen. 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 Happy to be a mother. Amen. Now, they point you out for being a mother. Yep. Too many children. Mm -hmm. Who says so? Glory. Can't be too many children. I got pregnant. Amen. God's hand, Amen. he allowed it. Amen. Maybe you want another preacher in the world. Who, how do you know? 
Glory, hallelujah. Well, I'm teaching good. Y'all don't have to holler, but I'm teaching good. What they're trying to do is get into your mental psych and make you think to be ashamed because you're a woman. Yep. Yes. And a man is ashamed because you're a man. Amen. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I can look in the mirror and uh, I don't need a psychiatrist to tell me. Praise God. All right. Amen. I need a psychiatrist to tell me a lie Come on. if I'm weak enough to go for it. Amen. Yes. You're a woman in a man's body. Amen. Oh, really? That sounds nice. But one thing for certain, a man can't get pregnant. And that's right. You say amen to that. Yes. Send them to the best doctors in the world, take the biggest pills and all whatever they give you. All the needles and injections and the hormones and this, and a man still ain't will never get pregnant. Amen. And when you find one that does, call me. Amen. And, I, and I'll end up being a Catholic. <laughs> as bad as I hate that religion. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got to understand the warfare that the devil has brought against the church as never before. They are testing your even your mental self, mm -hmm. trying to let you know that a child should be raised by their mother or father in a direction in which the mother, through the Bible, instructs their little child. Yes. So what they do, they attack by destroying the moral character of the church and these false churches and say no you well me and elder wagner went to the school uh, last week i believe it was and i wanted to give a seminar uh concerning homosexuality in the christian church Amen. Yes. i said no oh, no we don't allow that we don't allow that i said well you see what's going on they're teaching children a um, boy he can be a girl if you want to and a girl can be a boy see yeah well, what's wrong with that i said what did you say he said, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. So I look at Elder Wang and I say, I guess we're in the wrong place. Oh, sure enough. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? What's right with it? Amen. Amen. But this is what they now are committed to by this new movement. And we are a guiding light that must stand up and be the bright light that will shine against us in righteousness and all this foolishness that they are trying to bring against parents. And parents are, listen, Parents are gobbling this up. Yep. You got professional basketball players yep. allow their wives to bring up their little boys yep. dressed in, as little girls. Yep. Mm -hmm. I can name a few, but I don't want to, I don't want to call no, no names because they already know who they are. Right. Big time basketball player making millions of dollars shooting the hoop. Mm -hmm. But you bring your you let your wife bring your little boy up to be a little girl oh. and say you're proud of it. Shame on you. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you need an old fashioned country woman. Is what you need. Behind the bar. Amen. With two or three men Amen. chipping in and catch one get tired. No, for real. Amen. But this is being entertained because there's a passiveness in the church. And that's why they don't like us. You two. It's through the grace of God we are on YouTube. You know, we, we are uh, uh, in the top 10 Amen. of the uh, lesbian homosexual movement. Yeah. We are in the top 10. Yeah. I'm striving for number one. Amen. I don't know whether I get there or not, but I'm striving. Amen. And they want to take me off. Well, they, well, they took us off YouTube, I think, two or three times, but they, oh, yeah. God made them put us back on. So, so, somebody need to hear this. Amen. Somebody got to be taught the truth of God's word. Amen. We today have got to have some backbone. We are not alone. Amen. Even on the job, you might think you're alone, but you are not alone because you got God on your side. And don't never be afraid or ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Never. And we're going to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. We're important. Hear me. We are important because we are the only guiding light left in the midst of this perverse generation. Yes. We're the only guiding light left. Yes. yes. So we already dealt with the bell covering. And I shared Holman Dictionary Bible. Those of you viewing by YouTube, go to the library and get Holman's Dictionary and look under head covering. And it'll show why Paul wrote this epistle in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Because women thought that under grace, they didn't have to wear a veil. And Paul hurried up and corrected that. 
Hallelujah. Well, I thought grace, you could do anything. No, that's what the devil tells you. And the devil's church. Under grace, you can do anything. God still loves you. God ain't going to send nobody to hell who he loves. We can stop that foolishness right now. And if you don't obey God, did he say love not the world? Yes. Neither the things that are in the world. For the love of the world is not of God. Neither the things that are of the world. If any man love the world, the love of God is not in him. The world. Yes. And it's not talking about flowers or plants or streams or whatever. It's talking about people in the world who don't follow God. Yes. And we have to point them out. Yes. So that maybe they can change the heart, change the attitude and come in yes. to true light and be saved like us. Amen. It's not hard. It, well, I put it this way. It's not impossible because God can do anything. He saved us, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> hey, praise God. And we, some of us wasn't no easy thing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Amen. But he did it. Amen. He, 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 he didn't give up on us, did he? He had no patience with some of us. <laughs> some of us, he had to spank a little bit, too. Amen. Well, praise God. The Bible says, who he loved, he'll chastise. Amen. So, church, we have to understand our mission. Our mission is not by accident. It's on purpose. But God never called a coward to do his work. He always called somebody with some backbone. Somebody with some courage. Saul was on the road to Damascus to punish the church of God. And he had letters from the St. Hedrin court. To back him up. He was like a deputy sheriff. Going to persecute the church of God in Damascus. God knocked him to the ground and said, Saul, why persecute thou me? Yes. And Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? Yes. He says, I, Jesus, speaking to you. Amen. And he was speaking in Hebrew, so he didn't say Jesus. He said, Yes, sure. Right. Speaking to you. What would you have for me to do, Lord? He said, Go to Damascus. I got a preacher. He'll tell you what to do. Yes. And when he got to Damascus, Ananias, the preacher, said, Brother Saul, you got to get baptized. Wash away your sins. And he got baptized. And he said, now, God has showed me certain things you got to go through. Because God called you to be an apostle. Yes. And Paul went through it like a soldier. Amen. Hallelujah. At the end of his journey, he said, Timothy, I fought a good fight. Right. Getting ready to go and get his head cut off. Y'all heard me share it many times. Amen. But you need to think about it. Yes. I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Amen. You know that's a powerful testimony when you're getting ready to go and die the next day. Lord. Think about it. How many of us would have that same testimony? Lord. I think we all would have. Amen. If, if, if confronted, Amen. facing death or, 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 or and denying Christ, I, I know I made up my mind. Amen. And I'm pretty sure you have too. Because look at the things you're going through right now because you're saved. Hallelujah. Glory. That's what I'm going through because I'm saved. Because I'm going to carry my cross. Because I'm not going to back down or bow down. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep on fighting the good fight. I'm going to keep on picking up my cross. I'm going to keep on reading my Bible and studying my word until I get this thing so deep down inside of me. I ain't never going to let no devil take it out of my mouth or take it out of my heart. I'm sold out. I'm sold out to Jesus. I'm going all the way. Amen. Hope everybody go with me. But if ain't even two or three, yeah, I'm going all the way. Amen. I'm made up my mind. Yes. Church, all it takes is a made up mind and a heart's desire yes. to want to follow after God. Yes. We got a reward coming. Yes. Not right now, yes. but later on. A great reward. Yes. Let's suffer a little bit down here so we can have a whole lot of blessings up there. Amen. We're going to follow him amen. to the end of the journey. Amen. Say amen. amen. All right, let's go to our question there. So much we can talk about. We've got to save some from next week. Right. <laughs> Number one, reading Acts chapter 10 verses 3 through 6 give two points that allow God's favor toward Cornelius. Read it again, daughter. Reading Acts chapter uh, no, 10. Uh, read it out of the scripture. Oh. 
Don't want everybody, some don't have the Bible here. I want you to have clarity where we're going. Amen. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before Thy God. Thy prayers. Now this is what the angel told Cornelius. Yes. Thy prayers and thy alms have come up as a memorial before God, and now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon a tenor. Now was, the angel told him where to go, and Cornelius obeyed. Now read uh, Acts, I mean Acts 8 chapter verses, I think 26 and 27, or 24 and 25, the Ethiopian eunuch. Yes. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, and to a way they go up down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is desert. And he went and rose, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Now, the Ethiopian eunuch had just left Jerusalem worshiping, and he came to Philip, and Philip saw him reading the Bible, but of course he didn't know what he was reading. Lord. All right, now question one again. Reading Acts chapter 10, verses 3 through 6, give two points that allow God's favor toward Cornelius. All right, two points that allowed God's favor to Cornelius. Who wants to try the first one? All right, evangelist, you had your hand up first. <laughs> Alms and prayers. All right, she says alms and prayer, yes, sir. or tithe or offerings and prayer. Yes, sir. Who disagree? Somebody put something else. All right, true. The two things. He prayed, and he gave his tithe. Amen. Read. Next question. What single word prompted Cornelius to seek Peter? What single word? prompted Cornelius to seek Peter. What single word prompted Cornelius to seek the Apostle Peter? What single word? Nobody got their hand up. All right, is that Elder? I put obedience. Obedience? Who else put something? All right, have nice. I put instruction. All right, instruction. But who, uh, obedience, who, uh, uh, did you, you had something different? Oh, first of all, I said prayer. All right, prayer. Single word. Anybody else got something? All right, no. I put commanded. Well, now, now I, I said best word. Now, the best word I got, single word, was salvation. He wanted to be saved. He prayed, and he gave his tithes. So what did he want? He wanted salvation. Mm. Everybody see that? Amen. So I'm right and y'all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question, next question, two. Uh, yeah, number three. Number three. Reading Acts chapter 10, verse four. Was Cornelius saved, yes or no? Oh, was Cornelius saved, yes or no, during this episode? Was he saved, yes or no? Now he paid his tithes and his offering. And he prayed. What did he say? Uh, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, no. Adam said no, he would not say. Uh, the evangelist, was he saved? No, sir. Anybody put yes? Amen. No. Amen. He would not say. Amen. 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 He paid his tithes. And he prayed, but he still wasn't saved yet. Hallelujah. All right, next question. Cornelius prayed and gave his offerings. Why? Best single word. Cornelius prayed and gave his offering. Why? Single word. All right. Believe. You have your hand up. Oh, yes, sir. I said sincere. Anybody? 
put something else. Best single word? Going right back to it. Salvation. Lord. You want to be saved? Grace. I'm right again. <laughs> I said best single word, didn't I? <laughs> Praise God. Our right, next question. Reading Acts chapter 8, verses 27. We have a good time, ain't we? <laughs> <laughs> Say again, Dom. Uh, reading Acts chapter 8, verses 27 and 28. What prompted the Ethiopian to worship and read the Bible? Best single word. Of uh, the Ethiopian eunuch. He worshiped and read the Bible. Best single word. All right. Uh, Praise the Lord. I would have to say belief on that one. All right, you said belief. <laughs> Best single word. All right. Uh, Evangelist. <laughs> I believe I'll say salvation. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to answer? Salvation. Okay, reading Acts chapter 8, verse 27, 28. What prompted the Ethiopian to worship and read the Bible? Best single word. Worship and read the Bible. Salvation. You want to be saved. Yes. Amen. Preacher, you're ready. Amen. Oh, I'm having a good time. Amen. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Reading Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Give three verses that clarifies Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Is that a 30 point question? 40 points. 40. Huh? 40 points. 40 point question. Read that again. Reading Matthew 28, 19. Give three verses that clarify Acts chapter 2, verse 38. All right, read uh, Matthew 20 and 19, daughter. Watch close now. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now read that question again. Reading Matthew 28, 19, give three verses that clarifies Acts chapter 2, verse 38. That clarifies or connects with Acts second chapter verse thirty eight. Re uh, read Acts second chapter verse thirty eight. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Now, Jesus said in Matthew twenty eight nineteen, Be baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Peter in the New Testament church introduction says, Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin. Now I want three verses that connects. And how many points for that? Forty points. Uh, all, all right, now I'm gonna start up with start with some of you preachers here. All right, uh, Elder. I put Acts eight and sixteen, Acts ten and forty-eight, and Acts nineteen and five. Read, read them, loud and clear. <laughs> three verses now. That connect. That clarifies Acts 238. Otherwise, you got a dispute. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Jesus said in Matthew 20, 19, baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yeah. And here Peter said, baptized Father uh, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So it's a slight controversy if we don't have scripture to back up what these ignorant <laughs> Trinitarian people teach. Yeah. Amen. Who are we gonna believe? Jesus, Matthew 28, 19, or Peter in Acts 238? Yeah, right. We're going to straighten it up. Okay. Acts 8 and 16. For Read. Acts 8 and 16. Mm -hmm. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right, your next one. Next one. Acts 10 and 48. Mm -hmm. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Okay. And your next one. Acts 19 and 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now read the question again. Reading Matthew 28, 19. Give three verses that clarifies Acts 2, 38. So I'm going to have to call that wrong. Oh. All right, who, who, who wants to try? Uh, let me see. Elder, you want to try? Don't laugh too loud, I'm going to call you next. <laughs> Come on, help me. It clarifies it. It clarifies it, yes. 
I don't know how y'all can forget. Well, it's say, uh, the name, the name, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Okay. All right, sit down. <laughs> okay. uh, all right, all right, uh, uh, Evangelist, sent you. Glory to God. You see him enough. No, amen, prophet, how I got. Hallelujah. I, I put Acts 238 and Acts 19 and Read the question again. Reading Matthew 28, 19, give three verses that clarifies Acts 2.38. Three verses that clarifies or brings a clarity to Acts 2.38 as apply, uh, uh, Matthew 28, 19, as applied to Acts second chapter, verse 38. Uh, now, uh, Edwin, you want to try it? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I put... Uh, Romans 4 and 12. Romans 4 and 12? Yes, sir. No. In the back. No, yeah, I'm going to put another shot. It's uh, Acts, um, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name. No, no, oh. no, no, wait, ain't nobody going to get this, so let me go ahead. <laughs> hey, 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 you want to try it? Yeah, I, 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 I'm thinking you're going by authority. Um, for John 1 and 10. Matthew 1, 21, and Romans 8, 9. Oh, yeah. One person got it right. <laughs> All right, Elder, read, uh, 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 actually, uh, what are you, 1 and 10, and John yeah. 1 and 10. John 1 and 10. He was in the world. He was in the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. That shows creation, creation, don't it? Amen. Uh, uh, next one was? Matthew. 121. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall Have a son that shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from, his from their sins. Yeah. The next one was Romans 8 9. Romans 8 9. Read. If any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. All right. He's a father in creation. Yes. Romans 1 and 10. Yes. Son of redemption. Matthew 121. Yes. Holy Ghost in the church. Romans 8 and 9. Amen. Daughter, maybe you better read it. Give, give Matthew, uh, uh, St. John 1 and 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Does that not make him creator? Amen. Now get uh, Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That makes him savior, don't it? Yes. Yeah. All right. Give me Romans 8 and 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That makes me the Holy Ghost in the church now. Yes, hallelujah. So three scriptures that bear record from Matthew 28, 19. For we therefore teach all nations, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Jesus, the Father in creation, yes. Son of redemption, Holy Ghost in the church. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Now, why well, I'm upset? Because all your ministry credentials got on the back the same thing. Or should have. Amen. It does. D does it? It does. Yes, oh, all right. You got your hand up? Uh, no, sir. Okay. I just, I just yes. Want to say I had that prophet. You had it? Yes, sir. Oh, praise God. All right. So we got, got two had it. Is it a third one? No, I got a We in church, you got to tell the truth. <laughs> Is it a third one who had it? No, only two. All right. Praise God. Now, again, minister, this should be on the back of your credentials. Amen. Father in creation, Son of redemption, Holy Ghost in, in dwelling. Yeah. All right. Next question. The proper noun for God revealed to the prophet blank was blank. In the back. Moses and Jehovah. Moses. Prophet Moses was correct. And the name of Jehovah. That's correct. Amen. All right. Who missed that? Nobody? Everybody got it right. Okay. Uh, the last question. The proper noun with the title Savior resulted in the Greek word blank. Now, ain't nobody going to miss that. Proper noun for Savior 
He's using the Greek word. Who wants to get even? All right. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Amen. 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 Want to be follower of Christ. I want to be one of his disciples. Oh, 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 Thank God for the blessed time we had tonight in the Bible study, amen. Thank God for the blessed word, amen. Our prophet got us again, amen. And to keep, us, keep us studying, amen. Thank God for the word prophet spoke about the discipline code and spiritual taking advantage, you know, someone is watching you, amen. And so let the people know the true church, amen. We're going to be attacked. Spoke about the veil, amen. Thank God the veil is part of the holy living, amen. And you got to let, let the spirit control, as he spoke about. And he said, no cowards allowed, amen. Thank God we don't have any cowards in our church, amen. And we're standing up, t teaching and preaching the word. The rules are in the Bible, and you need guidance. It's the doctrine to save us. Our guidance is through our prophet, amen. We have to have a prophet to guide us, amen. And we don't know the word. We came in lost, but you got to let the word saturate, saturate you, amen, as you come in new. As that we came in as babes, and we just said, "Oh, I didn't know about that. What you got to wear a veil? Oh, I didn't know why those people clapping. You know, I was there once. Amen. Now I know, and the amen. Lord has, through the prophet, has taught us. Amen. amen. The discipline code. Amen. Of obedience. Amen. And uh, thank God for the word. I was thinking, I can see what else I wrote. But this, is, and I never forget what prophet said on Seven Mile. He said, "The stories are wonderful, beautiful, but it's the doctrine to save you." Amen. I never forgot that. Amen. I said, well, I didn't grow up in church, amen. I didn't grow up in church, but I knew my mom taught me how to pray, amen. Said, ask God for anything. So when he said, the doctrine, I said, I don't know too much of the stories, but now I know a lot more than I knew then. So when you come in and let God, through the prophet, guide you and teach you, you're going to learn. But you got to say, this is what I want. This is what I signed up for, amen. Not the Baptist church. It's about what True Light is doing. Don't worry about what they're doing, amen. Because they're, like prophets said, they're going to the lake. But thank God if you follow prophets and just keep eating the word and the guidance and keep saying, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know Christmas was pagan. We all had Christmas trees. We all had pumpkins and all that stuff. But now we know it's pagan. So thank God for the work. Thanks for the teaching. Thank God you got to break your neck and try to give somebody a gift that don't like you. And say, oh, that was a dollar. You know, <laughs> thank the Lord that you can say, thank you, Jesus. I'm out of that paganism. And thank the Lord just for the veil. Thank God for the teaching. Thank God for the truth. Amen. So that's what we need to say. Thank you, Lord, for the truth. Thank you, Jesus, that I found a new family that, you know, people may laugh. You know, the veil, I remember, I'm going to close real quick, in Detroit. I taught in the middle school. We didn't, we wore the veil in church only at the time in Dolly. So Amen. I went to the, um, transferred to the high school. And the same student, you know, they follow. And she said, oh, you didn't wear that in middle school. You know, then kids will say, oh, you're Muslim, this and that. And I had to tell her, no, I didn't, because she, she didn't know. But I taught the little girl, well, the young girl, teenager. And she said, oh, really? And that was something to open up to the young people. But I thank God, amen, Prophet, when he didn't know about the word of wearing it all the time, not in church, he told the church, amen. And a lot of preachers out there just listening to Prophet are amen. cowards because they're afraid to tell the people to put on their veil, wear a dress, and if your child come home saying, Mommy, I want to wear a dress, and he's a boy, you got to tell him, no, loose here, like Prophet said. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank God for the word, amen. amen. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent, one from another, in Jesus' name.